Talk, talk to me. WSRadio.com Welcome to Performance in Motion with your host, Dr. Dennis. Okay, folks, we are back and uh, incredible show with my buddy, Mundo Castro Home. Yeah, What's up, buddy. bro? How's it going, man? All right, man. Hey, you were kind enough to share uh, where you grew up and uh, the start of your uh, love for sports and especially football. So let's get right into, into it, bro. Most of us out there including myself, uh, almost had a pro career and injuries put me out. So let's talk about your injuries starting from the beginning. Oh, man, where do we start? Uh, I would, I'm would. i going to start with probably the most significant injuries first. Um, I've had tons of, uh, you know, a broken leg, broken wrist, broken fingers. Um, I've had a separated shoulder on my right side. I had pretty much, they, I forget what it was, the stage four or... or uh, okay. I'm not sure exactly. I can't remember now. This was back in 2003. Um, okay, gotcha. But, but then in 2006 or seven, um, I compressed, crushed my L4, L5, pinched my sciatic nerve, and honestly could not sleep, could not sit down, had to stand in class and take notes and whatnot. And I was in so much pain. I was taking ibuprofen it was like they were Tic Tacs. Wow. And, you know, just to be able to sit down, you know, and, and some of the I was, uh, you know, started to get real depressed. Sure. Um, you know, being yeah. an athlete, being able to run around, you know, being powerless, really, because, right. uh, you know, any little subtle movement would pinch that nerve and it would literally just shoot down the left side and just, you know, it completely stop you in your tracks. So, hey, can I ask you real quick? I'm um, just getting backing up a little bit. So how did that happen? With the, the spine. Oh, so what so, exactly happened? So um, I was out. This was at a practice at Palomar. And um, I was going in the middle of the field, turned around, caught the pass, took a hit on the lower back, and then pretty much just laid there for about five, ten minutes and knew there was something <laughs> there was something that hurt pretty bad. Yeah, and, uh, I can imagine. You know, I'm praying and hoping that – you know, it wasn't bad and kind of got up and I felt I felt all right. It was the next day that I was like, oh, my God, I couldn't even move. I thought I was like crippled because I could barely feel barely feel my legs. Wow. And uh, and then that nerve. I mean, when I stood up, I was like, oh, this is not good. And and I went to go, you know, obviously my mom took me to the doctor. Sure. And, uh, you know, because I could barely even I couldn't even get shoes on. I had little slippers and slid those on and then when i went to the the doctors they pretty much said oh well we can give you some uh, muscle relaxers we'll give you some ibuprofen um and then uh if that doesn't work you know we're gonna send you to uh you know rehab and go through you know some some so uh, sorry man see my my <laughs> science brain is working and you know being in this field for over 30 years i just don't understand the reasoning like you should have had X-ray MRI like immediately. They're not gonna do it in the emergency room, but they should have referred you out right away. And it's interesting how they chose the easiest, uh, most cost effect cost effective way of giving you some meds, which basically is putting a band aid on it. Okay, go ahead. Sorry about yeah, that. I had to throw that in there, man. No, no, go for it. And uh, so exactly. So I was like, man, there's no way um, some muscle relaxers and ibuprofen is gonna fix this. But I was like, all right, you know, I trust you guys. You're the doctor. I'm not. Um, and went about my business and and it just it actually got it kept getting worse yeah absolutely. Um, and you know my mom suggested you know well you know why don't you try you know going to the chiropractor see if they can help you out went to the chiropractor and really it was uh just a that within that five minutes i felt good but then after i left you know i was back to feeling terrible and you know put on like to be honest, probably 50 to 60 pounds during that time. And that was within a six month period yeah. um, because yeah, I makes sense. couldn't even move. Yeah. And uh, so <laughs> the rehabilitation was not through the, through the doctors it was actually through a track coach from my high school, gotcha. uh, Larry Hall. And he was just like, look, 
number one, we got to get this weight off, and this is going to be hell pretty much. Right. And I was like, at this point, man, I'll do whatever it takes to get rid of this pain. And um, yeah, he was big on stretching. We did, I mean, every day before and after workouts, we stretched. Right. And we did a lot of running, a lot of parachute, a lot of sw swim workouts. And then sooner or later, I was able to get that weight off. Back felt pretty good. Came back to football, could have played. Decided, hey, you know what? I'm I'm good. I'm, that's it for me. I'm I'm done deal. You know. Yeah. No, I that's hear you, it. man. So um, fast forward. So after that, um, then you were able to play at junior college, right? Yep. And so, what did you play? Two years over there. I played two years there. Two years. So yeah. your your back, your spine was pretty much okay. Yeah. During during the whole two years. Yeah, and and you know, coming back from that injury though, I was still hesitant. You know, in yeah, the back of your course. mind, you're like. Man, I was feeling terrible. You know, I, I don't know if I want to keep on doing this. And that's when I had the opportunity to transfer to go on to the next level. I uh, pursue football still. I said, and that was it for me. I, I just didn't want to do it. Yeah, that makes sense, man. I mean, you know, we have to look long term, and and life is a marathon, not a sprint. And it's hard when when you're when you're trying to achieve as an athlete. Um, I could definitely relate. And um, for me, it was a knee. And unfortunately, it was misdiagnosed, um, which happens to a lot of people out there. And I call myself a cement head because I kept training harder, and then I got to the point where I couldn't walk. Um, so it's very similar to you know things you've been through. And I think what the coaches and the parents really need to understand is there is a psychological component, which is very strong, and it actually follows um, the sequence – of when we face trauma or an obstacle, all right? And depression is the first part of it. And uh, I think that nowadays, especially here in San Diego, there are a lot of amazing programs for support groups. There's professional help. And actually, uh, you know, I know a few sports psychologists that um, even if people don't have the finances, there are programs out there for a lot of athletes. Just quick, um, did you do you know if you had any of that? maybe available or no one really spoke about it De definitely that wasn't available uh, you know, I, got you, I, I mean that, that never came to my attention that was more just you know definitely had the all those symptoms though you know the depression and whatnot you know yeah, bro. and uh but not just more it was just family and the you know my football teammates and friends really that were the sport group cool so moving forward now um you know i we got to speak and what I think it was, uh, you said like a few years ago, um, kind of threw the back out again during CrossFit. Can oh. you explain that? Like maybe a quick uh, I'll give you little some. thing on it. Absolutely. <laughs> so pretty much to sum it up, it was, uh, you know, you're going through the AMRAP and I was doing so many, so many of those and was going heavier weight. And the next thing I knew I was doing a deadlift and then snap and then just completely just fell to the floor. And I said, you know what? CrossFit is not for me. Yeah, so this is uh, so I got my science hat on right now, and uh, here here's my here here are the pros of con CrossFit. Okay, pros are good things, right, everyone? Okay, good thing is it comes from cross training. Cross training, you look at all the research. Guess what? You you prolong your your career, you prolong your performance, you increase your performance, all of that. That's the great part. You, they incorporate um, body weight exercises. They incorporate calisthenics. A lot of great things, functional movement patterns. Here, here's the thing, though. If you work out for an hour at, at minute 58, you can't start increasing the intensity because then the probability of injuries is directly related to that, and there's a high probability you're going to get hurt. Here's the other thing that, that my big thing out there, and I actually just wrote a blog on this, so we'll get to that in a second. But here's the thing. We all need to be screened on our, our functional abilities because most of us that are active have had injuries in the past. So we need a formal screening before we even get into an amazing, um, very complicated movement patterns, especially Olympic lift. That is one of the most technical lifts out there. You know, I got to spend a weekend with uh, the USA coach in Delaware a couple of years ago. And to be honest, I had a hard time uh, figuring out the lift because there were so many components to it. But anyway, just want to sum that up and uh, – you know, I'm sorry that you had to go through that, but I got to tell you, man, I see you in the gym, and you're there every day, and I don't see any limitations right now. 
Oh, man. I, you know, in there every day, just like Dennis is. Dennis is hungry, yes, getting after it, you know, about 5.30 a.m. in there, getting it going. Right. A.m. crowd, baby. Yeah, the a.m. crowd. Let's go. Let's get it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, we try to do our thing and uh, no limitations at all, you know, running, stairs, lifting, whatever it takes to get it done. And I have to say, you know, Mundo really stood out when I first met him because he was very uh, he was very positive very focused, you know, and very real. And and that's uh, those qualities, I don't see it much. Uh, maybe I haven't been out here long enough. How about you? No, oh, it, you know, it, it's out there, you know. Uh, we got some good people, especially the, you know, the local crowd. So, you know, pretty laid back community in San Diego. And, uh, you know, I'm glad to be a part of it. And it was a pleasure, obviously, running into Dennis. You know, Dennis is a good man and has uh, some sound techniques on how to be able to improve your guys' health. So stay tuned. All right, folks, we're coming to the end of segment number two. Can you believe it? It's almost done already, and we're getting some valuable information and, and a very inspirational story from a young man that, that is saying it like it is, and I, I really respect that. And you can see it in his eyes. He looks at you in, in the eyes when, when you talk, which is, which is an amazing uh, quality to have. So this is Dr. Dennis of Performance in Motion, and we're going to come back in our third segment with Mr. Mundo Kestra Holm, and you're listening to WSRadio.com, the worldwide leader in internet talk. See you. Thank you for listening to WS Radio. Improve your business and your life with useful information from experts and thought leaders. WS Radio is radio with ROI. Are you losing the battle with technology? Tired of struggling with IT? Ready to meet your IT dream team? Centrix IT is Southern California's leader in IT management. A four-time winner of San Diego's fastest-growing privately held companies, Centrix IT has provided Fortune 500 managed IT services to small and medium businesses for over 13 years. Put an end to your struggle with technology today at CentrixIT.com. C-E-N-T-R-E-X. IT.com. Life is full of misadventures, from car crashes to home fires to getting choked out on the mat. Yes, I said getting choked out because I'm Carlos Kramer, jiu-jitsu competitor, MMA and media personality, and mild-mannered insurance agent. You can follow my adventures on Kick-Ass Radio, and I can protect you from life's misadventures at Kramer Insurance. Home, auto, life, business, and workers' comp. We're at KramerINS.com, and I want you to join my world. Are your feet hurting you? I mean really hurting you so much that you can't come to the fair and enjoy other activities with your friends? If so, you may have plantar fasciitis, a chronic inflammation of the connective tissues in the foot. I'm Holly Halsey. I'm a licensed acupuncturist, and I can help you with your pain. I invite you to visit me at my webpage, AccusageHouseCalls.com. That's A-C-U-S-S-A-G-E, HouseCalls.com. Find out what pain-free feels like. Hi, this is Rob Barnett, VinVillage.com, where wine lovers connect. Be sure to tune in weekly to Vin Village Radio for exclusive, in-depth interviews with the who's who in wine and food. Do you want to be a professional coach? Are you in business trying to make a real difference with people you manage or work with? Have you started a coaching practice that isn't quite getting off the ground? Get the skills you need to be a successful coach today with the Coach's Training Program from Accomplishment Coaching. The Coach's Training Program will show you how to help others focus and be more fulfilled. Whether you want to improve your company's bottom line or create a thriving coaching practice, Accomplishment Coaching can give you the distinctions and practices you need to coach others effectively today. Accomplishment Coaching has spent six years developing a cutting-edge coaches training program that will have you ready to coach people professionally in just 12 months, and you don't have to take time off work to do it. To find out more about the coaches training program, just call 1-888-548-6813. That's one 888 
548-6813.